I'm here on the Depsis booth with Anya. Anya, last year, what caught my eye when I was walking past the Depsis booth was the tagline, we make your, your, your make a smart grid in one day. Mm -hmm. Now, and I was intrigued with the solution. Yet, the perception out there is that most utilities, DSOs, are not getting smart as fast as they could. But what challenges are they facing out there? Uh, and, and it is true that they're not getting smart as fast as they could, uh, nor probably as they should, I would they say, uh, even if many of them don't have direct commercial pressure right. on them. And I think they're not getting smart fast enough because it's complicated. It's complicated just as any other industry that's been transforming digitally over the past decade or more of knowing what do I start with, why do I start with that, and how should I think about it, and how, does, you know, how do I get my workforce along with yep. that. I really see that those are ultimately the bigger challenges, not which choice of technology. Now, we happen to have technology that you can implement very, very quickly. It's an added, added benefit, but in its own right, it's not sufficient. It's far from sufficient. Um, and they are... Um, but if I may, the... Sure. Traditionally, if I look at the, the DSOs and whatever, they kind of had their, they had their fate in their own hands. Yeah. So if they decided yeah. to deploy something, yeah. it was they decided. But now I'm starting to see... Um, there's, comp there's, there's people, there's whatever, uh, other business, starting to deploy electric vehicle chargers. And that's not in the control of the utility and or the DSO anymore. And suddenly it's like, oh, hang on a second, there's people mm, plugging in mm, loads and whatever mm, everywhere. Mm. That, that must be, is that, is that well, changing but, but this, this, this is really, so, so it is. This is, what, this is what is changing the operational yeah. challenges that they face, of course, and the planning challenges that they face. Because what used to be centralized, unidirectional, now is a decentralized, bidirectional, multidirectional environment where they don't have the visibility. They don't have the control, as you say, of what's going on and what gets added and, and not added. And so in the absence of using clever solutions, technology solutions to be able to manage that, in the absence of that, they're having to actually downsize, which, which I as a consumer find a bit ashamed. They're actually, in some cases, having to downsize their ambitions of rolling out renewable energies, like a, like a big solar panel installation for the, with a large industrial customer, for example, to be sure that they can really satisfy and support that. They'd say, oh, let's, let's downsize a little bit so we, we're sure we don't run into trouble. With technology, you can actually make sure that it balances better, and then we get to renewables faster. Do you, do you see DSOs starting, you know, we've had, we've been talking about IoT for mm. a while, where I came mm, from, true. whatever. Yeah. It was embedded before it was IoT. Um, and there, there is a lot of technology deployed into the grid, but a lot of the times yeah. the data is just not being collected, or if it's being collected, it's not being used. Do, do you see them, I know it's kind of a generic term, do you see them all, are they, is there a trend of, are they, are they using the data? Because sometimes the whole concept is, mm, let's mm, get the, mm. um, how would you say, we can simulate what will happen if we plug in 10 vehicle charges yeah. down here. Yeah. Is it getting better? Huh. I, have to, I have two two answers to your question. The first one is around how, what they decide to focus on. And what, what we're seeing is that the right way to do it is to say, how do I need to be able to operate in the future? To operate that way, therefore, what are the decisions I have to be able to take? Yep. To take those decisions, what the information I'm going to need, where am I going to find that information, which is what's the data I need to collect? And therefore, I need these new capabilities to collect that data to, to operate like that, right? That's kind of strategic top down. What we're seeing is in the absence of that kind of vision and strategy for many DSOs, they're kind of playing around with technology instead. Oh, I'm trying to see how it works, and then I'm see, see, going to see the data I can collect, and then I'll figure out what I, what I want to do with it. And I mean, we've seen this in other industries like financial services, telecommunications, we've seen that over the past decade. So I think uh, some of them have amazing, I'm spoken to some here uh, uh, to this week, or uh, very, very visionary, and some of them, frankly, don't know where they want to go. So big difference, huh, between the two. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's something I've seen in the industry, you know, we kind of tar everybody, well, the utility, yeah, the yeah, DSO, no, but there's a the, very uh, big difference. They're so different. The, the regulatory frameworks, the, the geographical locate, the yeah. what resources yeah. they have, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, so and, and some countries like Switzerland, where we're based, is hugely fragmented. Six hundred and forty DSOs. In Switzerland, the smallest one has less than ten customers connected. And so you think, 
how do you drive innovation in such a fragmented industry, right? It's, inc it's incredible, whereas if you look at France, you, you right. literally have very few it places, it's very, very different. Um, but the other thing about the data side, I'd say, is that obviously with smart meters, there's a view that smart meters now, my, my, my distribution grid is now smart because I have smart meters. And, and it makes sense for the DSOs to um, gain as much value from that, those smart meters as they the possibly can. They've made that of investment, course. so it's there. Absolutely, right? And, and, and that's where they get data from. The problem, the challenge is that smart meters are fine for billing, they're fine for custo end customer information. The granularity it lacks and the, the specifics in terms of measurements lacks in order to really make true decisions on the grid. So you can enhance and reinforce, if you wish, the value, the contribution, potential contribution of a smart meter data. So you can reinforce it with, with solutions like what we provide and others as well to suddenly be able to make some real operational decisions at the grid level combined with the smart meter data. And that, for me, I think is, is, is the vision. I don't think you have to digitalize a whole low voltage uh, network or the grid, it's a matter of being strategic about where you place yeah, the, the, the digital uh, measurement capabilities to make better decisions. Just because you can digitalize or potentially digitalize everything yeah, you don't doesn't have to. necessarily... Yeah. No, you don't have to. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. it'd be um, great for hardware companies and Yeah, yeah, whatever, absolutely. That'd be nice. But well, we're ready to take the order, may, but <laughs> they don't meanwhile, have to. Meanwhile, in the real world, yeah. and last question, yeah. um, with, the, with the next generation coming along, with the mm -hmm. whole thing with Friday for Futures, one of the themes here that I heard a lot this year, and I've been coming here for many years, was decarbonization yes. was the new buzzword. Yes. And, and a sense of frustration with people that were not moving faster. Yep. Because the kids are kind of going, or granddad and grandma, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 why aren't mm -hmm. you doing this? Mm -hmm. Or mom and dad. Mm -hmm. um, do you see anything coming there? Are we, are we going to get faster? Is this industry going to get faster because the next generation are going, oi, do something? So, uh, you know, in terms of change, if you look at kind of digital transformation in, in, in the world, it's always the individual that is the quickest at adopting. Yeah. And then it's at the enterprise level, and then it's at the, the, the country legislative level. It's, it's in that, that order. I think that consumers that are now become prosumers, they don't just want a utility. Utilities not just, should not just be providing utility. They really, consumers want a service. And ideally with our electrical vehicles and our solar panels, it's, it's we want to be able to balance whatever. everything, right? So we want a service. And as consumers, we're putting pressure on the DSOs. What, what I think is essential, though, is that the, the regulatory, legislative side of it has got to move faster. Because in the absence for those DSOs, where in, in the markets that are not sufficiently deregulated today for them to really have any kind of competitive pressure, yep. even with the consumers pushing, uh, how much are they really going to, to address that or not? Uh, and so I think it's got to be in, in conjunction in play with, with legislation moving faster, which we're seeing, right? I mean, no, it moves around 20 by 2030, was it 32% of all energy in the year in the EU is going to come from renewables. There's a lots of CO2 um, neutral, uh, uh, CO2 emission neutral uh, uh, policies that are being voted. So it, I, I have... I have great hopes that you know, we're close to the inflection point. Yeah, yeah. personal opinion. Yeah. Um, from where we were a couple of years ago, there's there's a lot of a lot of good stuff done. I think now that the sense is that yeah, a lot of good stuff done, lots more to do, but we just need to do it faster. Yeah. But yeah. I, but what's going to what's going to create that sense of urgency? I, I, if I knew that answer, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be an interesting oh, couple of years. Yes. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by.